Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Did you hear about a world-famous boxer attending a Donald Trump rally while wearing a hijab and daring people to fight? That's fake news. A story started on a sports comedy website, and it went viral, but people didn't know whether it was true or not. That same month, March 2016, some people claimed that leaked emails between Hillary Clinton and a staff member held hidden messages that proved Clinton was involved with human trafficking. This fake news also went viral, and it led to a man firing shots in a Washington, D.C. pizza restaurant. Pizzagate is one example of what can happen when fake news or misinformation spreads. Research suggests that false news and information travels much faster than the truth on social media. And the more falsehoods are repeated, the more easily people believe them. Fluency has to do with how familiar something is. So the more you hear something, the more it's repeated, the more familiar it becomes, and the more likely the brain is to think it's true. Cambridge University professor Sander van der Linden specializes in how to arm the brain to recognize and repel fake news before it can do harm. Here's a Cambridge experiment you can find online. You might think about skipping this ad. Don't. What happens next will make you tear up. Wait, you're still here? The goal is to vaccinate or inoculate people against misinformation by showing them common tactics used to manipulate people's emotions, beliefs, and actions. Appealing to your feelings, blaming scapegoats, and setting up false dichotomies. If you're not with me, then you're my enemy are some of the ways content creators can influence people. Sometimes the intentions behind the manipulation can be malicious. The epidemic of malicious fake news and false propaganda that flooded social media over the past year, it's now clear that so-called fake news can have real world consequences. Chuck Salter understands this. Having been a school teacher, principal, superintendent, he's now CEO of the nonprofit, nonpartisan News Literacy Project based in Washington, DC. The mission, educate the public how to recognize so-called fake news. With the 2016 presidential election, regardless of who anyone was for or against. It became pretty obvious uh, to the public that we had a serious problem with disinformation. When someone uses that term fake news, really what that means is it's news they don't like or news they don't agree with, regardless of its veracity or accuracy. And so we really steer clear of that because unfortunately, it's become a weaponized, almost politicized word. So disinformation has the intent to deceive. Misinformation is simply the byproduct of people continuing uh, to share and spread whatever rumor or misinformation that they see. From 2016 through the 2020 election, the constant attack on the mainstream media as fake, you are fake news. followed by insistence that the vote itself cannot be trusted, has undermined Americans' confidence in journalism and in government institutions. Falsehood spread about routine election processes such as mail-in voting and drop boxes and how votes are processed and counted and even more have led to threats to election officials. The, the January 6th attack on the peaceful transition of power. Congressional hearings in 2022 sought advice from experts on how to combat the disinformation that threatens democracy while also protecting the right to free speech. But the 2020 election and its aftermath have seen disinformation not just employed by candidates or printed in crank books, but weaponized to cast doubt on the validity of elections themselves. So we accomplish our mission several ways. The first is in our public schools. You've got three questions. So our focus in the education space is to train teachers and provide them with cutting edge curriculum for them to actually use in their classroom. So it has incredible power to make people do things. I teach United States and Virginia government and I teach government through the news. They need to be able to recognize news for what it is and the standards of journalism and um, and I believe that it is a skill that will carry them beyond the classroom and into adulthood as they become voters and engaged in a, and participate in our democracy. Students have at their fingertips 
more information than ever before in human history and the ecosystem in which they dwell is polluted. We're learning about like different info zones so like um, we're learning how to differentiate like propaganda and um, entertainment and like raw information from the articles and like videos we're watching. I think lessons like this are really good because it actually like activates your mind as opposed to just looking at a textbook or like a test, like the, one of those kind of environments. I like talking to my peers and getting their opinions too, especially after the 2020 election. Um, I think a lot of people lost a lot of trust and they're trying to get it back. They really don't know where to start. There's a lot of false information going out and if you understand that it's false, you can think, think appropriately and accordingly and make the right decisions. It's really important to like know what's like an opinion or what's actually news. And if you want to like state your own opinion, I feel like knowing the facts and like the truth will be like like very beneficial to like stating your case as well. I think it's a big problem. People hear fake news and it gets around um, and changes the perception of a lot of people's opinions. People could believe in they could believe in like wrong things and it can end up hurting them. They don't know the truth. How often do kids our age really like look at news and stuff like that and really like talk about it and process it? And it was good because I didn't know there were so many types of info zones. Like I, I didn't really know how to separate them when we first started, but now like we're here going through these lessons and I'm like getting all of them right. Some people are more gullible than others. So I feel like um, it really depends on who the person is. But I personally, um, I don't. I don't believe things as easily. Like when I see them, like I'll fact check and like, and I'll make sure like it's real. If they don't want to retweeting or sharing like false information, you're just spreading it, getting it to more people, and you're just making it worse for everybody. But you can't really blame the people sharing because they probably didn't know themselves. But. When you know better, you do better. Yeah, when you know better, you do better. There are just too many people who are relying on false information to make vital decisions for our democracy. The News Literacy Project would like to see every school system in the country adopt these kinds of lessons. The Checkology e-learning platform is a free teaching tool. Those responsible for the founding of the country understood that a free press is necessary for a free people, and they put it in the Constitution. And I think the sooner that school systems account for that and make room for it, and I understand that that's difficult with all the other obligations they have, I think the better off we'll be. And so yes, I think um, this, the idea of news literacy embedded in our public education system so that all people are taught it, just like they're taught how to read, and just how they're taught how to write and to do arithmetic, has been important and has been recognized as being important since our very foundings. Don't be manipulated. Thank you for watching. Continue to follow Virginia news and stories by subscribing to our VPM YouTube channel.